All right. Uh, yeah. Is it visible? Yes. Yeah. Looks great. All right. First of all, I thank IHS for providing me providing this opportunity to pre to present my talk. And I would like to thank all of you for attending my talk. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about my work, which I have done in India. It's about a book called Corridius. And so without wasting time, let's get started with the talk. So this is the general outline for today's talk. So firstly, I will talk, give brief introduction about the topic, and then I'll talk briefly what materials and what methods we implemented for this study. And later we will uh, discuss a little bit about results. And for that, I'll be talking about morphological analysis and then the molecular analysis following by a taxonomy. And then we will cover discussion as well as uh, conclusion. So coming to the introduction, as my title suggests that I'm going to talk about integrative taxonomy. So let's first try to understand what is an integrative taxonomy. So it is a method which combines diverse data sets, including morphological, ecological, and molecular data. And why do we need integrative taxonomy? So in recent years, many studies have been focused or the uh, taxonomy started using integrative taxonomic approach. And this is because when morphological characters, fa uh, sorry, morphological approaches fail while dealing with species complexes or cryptic species, then setting species uh, boundaries are very difficult. And in this, in that case, we can use or we can combine the strength of various data types like genetics, morphology, behavior, and ecology to gain the more comprehensive understanding of the evolutionary processes. And the integrative taxonomy can also reveal complex, complex evolutionary processes like ecological speciation and also uh, incomplete lineage sorting. So for my talk, uh, for my study, uh, we, uh, we are working on the genus Corridius. This genus belongs to the family Dinitoridae. And the genus Corridius has around 36 described species, mainly from Afrotropical and Indomalayan region. And some of the species are uh, can be found in Australia as well as the Palearctic region. So from India, there are nine species uh, reported so far. And these includes Corridius chinensis, Nepalensis, Ianus, Singalanus, Brunius, Sanguinolentus, Asamensis, Laosanus, and Fuscus. And this genus is mainly phytophagous and mainly feeds on members of Cucurbitaceae and Fabiaceae families. Also, this genus uh, contains some uh, taxon has some taxonomical complexity uh, due to inadequate taxonomic studies, and also exists some cryptic morphological differences. And many species have been synonymized with other species, and being said that this that's why this species uh, is an ideal system to uh, implement integrative taxonomic approach then coming to the objective our main objective for this study was to conduct a systematic revision of the genus corridius from india and we wanted to implement the integrative taxonomic approach for this genus as well so for that the Methodology we followed that first we did increased taxon sampling and for that around 150 samples were collected throughout four years uh, from 21 different locations in India. And also we did morphological analysis and for that we use linear discriminant analysis. And then finally we did the phylogenetic analysis and for that we used two mitochondrial genes, uh, CO1 and 16S RNA. And then we obtained 61 sequences of and including gene bank from gene bank and those sequences were analyzed under my, uh, maximum likelihood and Bayesian inference algorithms. And finally, we used species delimitation methods. So for taxon sampling, we sampled uh, around seven out of nine known species, uh, including three undescribed species. 
and these specimens were collected and preserved in absolute alcohol for further analysis like morphological analysis and also for DNA extractions. And finally, we studied these uh, animals under Zeiss microscope and the photographs were taken using a digital uh, microscope. So the map here represents the sampling localities of this genus and our most of the study focuses on the uh, northeastern part of India, which again uh, comes under one of the uh, uh, biodiversity hotspot. Okay, next. So this is the pipeline which uh, we used for our phylogenetic analysis. So as I said earlier that we had 61 total sequences out of which 21 were newly uh, obtained and then we uh, got 49 sequences from gene bank. So we aligned all the sequences using genius program and then we use uh, partition finder to select the substitution models. So we ran two different uh, an uh, analysis for these sequences. First, we ran maximum likelihood analysis under uh, with IQ tree and with IQ tree uh, using 100 uh, bootstrap replicates. And then for Bayesian inference, we used 50 million generations with sample frequency of 500. And both the trees were visualized and edited using fig tree. Additionally, we used uh, species delimitation analysis or species delimitation methods. And first uh, species delimitation method we used was portion tree processes. What it does, it focuses on estimating the branching rates within the phylogenetic tree. And secondly, we use Bayesian portion tree processes. It is the same, it uses same uh, PTP model, but it incorporates Bayesian inference uh, to provide more uh, robust and probabilistic, uh, probabilistic estimates. And lastly, we use newly emerged uh, method, assemble species by automatic partitioning. And what this uh, method does, it employs the distance matrix method to delineate species, meaning that it uh, uses pairwise genetic distance to, it calculates pairwise genetic distance to delineate the species. Then before coming to results, I would like to give some interesting facts about this uh, genus or this species. So during our survey, we found that the Corydias chinensis, Nepalensis, Assamensis, Corydias species No2, No3 are routinely collected from river birds, river beds, and these species are being consumed over many years in north northeast India. So. Though these species are phytophagous, we found out that these species mainly move, only adults move to the river beds during winter season, though the reason is still uh, unclear because we did not find any single nymphal stage while collecting these samples from river beds. And I would like to mention uh, one more observation. So similar observation was made by distant back 100 years back. And still, this practice is still being uh, uh, after even after hundred years. Still, uh, local people do collect these insects from river beds. Then, coming to the result part, so initially we did the morphological analysis, and for morphological analysis, we use linear discriminant analysis. So the graph or the picture here shows the results of linear discriminant analysis where x-axis explains 76 percent and y-axis explain uh, 17 percent of total variance. So based on prior knowledge we assigned 10 groups of species out of which eight groups were uh, eight species were grouped together and this spe uh, species are species excuse me Corydia species number two, Corydia species number three, Corydias nepalensis, Fuscus, Sanguinolentus, Laosanus, Yanus, and Chinensis, which formed non overlapping uh, clusters, which can be seen in this plot. On the other hand, we found that two species, Corydias brunius and Singalanus, showed uh, shared a little morphospace with each other. So later we did the molecular analysis. So the figure here represents the phylogenetic tree based on two mitochondrial genes. 
and for maximum likelihood and bayesian inference we recovered same topology and the extreme right hand side shows the results of species delimitation analysis as well as we have incorporated the parameters of all three new species as well as uh, parameters of all chinensis so uh, we in this phylogeny we also included some of the ref, uh, sequences belonging to uh, family tesartomeri uh, tesartomeri and other four families belonging to super family pentatomida so there are no currently there are no previous work on specifically on genus coridius so we wanted to test the monophyly of this genus and for that we did include uh, sequences of cyclopelta which is again belong to the same dinidorini and we did find this genus is monophyletic and the species level sorry family level relationship yielded that uh, it showed that the tesartomeri and dinidoridi uh, does exhibit the sister relationship among them and also pentatomeri was recovered as a sister taxa to sydneydi then the our analysis uh, did support show the monophyly of five species which these are uh, coridius nepalensis brunius coridius species nova 2 then coridius singalanus and coridius videatus through our analysis we also found out there are two paraphyletic groups which are coridius chinensis which has six dis uh, distinct lineages as well as coridius linear uh, sorry Ianus, which has three uh, two distinct lineages and in this analysis we found out that our coridius species nova 3 is a sister taxa to coridius chinensis and the species delimitation analysis did show that the uh, asap analysis showed that the this species does uh, exhibit the distinct uh, it does resulted the distinct species Whereas Coridius species nova 2 uh, showed the uh, single putative, uh, putative species in all species delim de delimitation methods. Excuse me. And also, the Coridius negriventris was previously synonymized with the uh, Coridius nepalensis. It, in our uh, analysis, we recovered Coridius negriventris as a distinct lineage. Therefore, uh, sorry, independent lineage. So now uh, I'm going to give a brief, uh, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about the taxonomy of this uh, species. So this is the general morphology which I use, the terminology I which uh, use for uh, species descriptions. Then coming to the taxonomic part, uh, Coridius species NOVA 1 has uh, pale brown to dark brown color with irregular patches of yellow on pronotum and corium and it does have the pronotum with mid uh, longitudinal pale ochraceous band which is distinct from the rest other species and currently this species is uh, present in its type locality which is Arunachal Pradesh India then Coridus species number two which is which has four segmented antenna which is the peculiar character for this species because genus Coridius, it all rest species has five segmented antenna but the Coridius species number two has four segmented antenna and overall the body color is cupreous and second antennal segment is uh, largest in this species similarly this species is currently present in its type locality then third species which we are going to describe is uh, it shows the overall black uh, bronze black color and it has the body length is 18 to 20 mm and one of the peculiar character for this species is mandibular plates does not meet in front of Clypeus. Uh, Again this species is currently uh, present in its type locality Arunachal Pradesh, India. Then Coridius nepalensis, uh, the diagnostic character for this species is overall dark brown and it has five segmented antenna and the lateral margins of pronotum is rounded. This species is mainly distributed in Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, Nepal and Vietnam. 
then the next species is Corydeus singalanus. So Corydeus singalanus shows overall yellow except head, legs, uh, and corium. And the antennae is five segmented in this uh, species. And lateral margins of head uh, has black color. So which makes uh, different from other rest of the other species. And currently the distribution of this uh, species is from India, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka. The next species is Corydeus bruneus. Overall, this species show, shows the dark brown except pronotum, scutellum, and corium apicali. And this species has five segmented antenna with apical antenna yellow. And this species is mainly distributed through Australia, China, uh, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Myanmar. Next, uh, as I said, that the Corydeus, geni uh, Corydeus nigriventris was previously synonymized with Corydeus nepalensis based on the structure of Ediagus. But in our analysis, we did find out that these two species uh, shows the independent lineages. And one, uh, one of the a peculiar character for this species is entire body is blackish brown and then the lateral margins of pronotum rounded and second antennal segment shorter than third and this species is currently distributed from India. Next is Corydeus asamensis and for this so the Corydeus asamensis has five segmented antenna and all antennal segments are black the entire body color, including antenna, is dark black, and even metathoracic scent glands are matte black in this species. So the distribution for this species is uh, China, India, Nepal, and Vietnam. Then the Corydeus fuscus. So this species is really interesting because the lateral margins of pronotum and then corium and connexion is completely ochraceous, and rest body is dark brown. And this species is widely distributed throughout India, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. Similarly, Cordius lausanus is similar to the fuscus, but it the, the lateral margins of pronotum, corium, and connexion is completely orange. And this species is restricted to China, India, Laos, Thailand, and Vietnam. So we did compare uh, our specimen with the Laos, with the types of Laos anus, and it did show the similar characters and similar coloration. The next species uh, is Corydeus sanguinolentus. And again, this species shows the lateral margins of pronotum, corium, and connexion. It's completely red. As name suggests, sanguinolentus, it's completely red. So, and even this in this case, antennae is black. For, and this species is mainly distributed through China, India, Indonesia, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Then next is Corydeus yanus. This is widely distributed species and it has head, antennae, uh, calor region, and anterior half of pronotum. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, scutellum and membrane, which are black, and rest body is completely orange or sometimes it's red. Then coming to the next, Corydeus chinensis, as our analysis shows that there are six distinct lineages. So we have this image here shows all uh, members uh, contain uh, belongs to those six lineages. And one of the peculiar character we found in our all eight Chinese species is that the coloration of uh, antenna. So antenna in this case has four segment, uh, five segmented antenna with the apical segment yellow, but except the one fourth of the base, which is black. For this species, we did uh, dissected the male genitalia and we found the uh, we found out that there are some of the variation in uh, pygophore, shape of pygophore, but all paramures does show the similar shape, which is the apex is upwardly directed. And then coming to the discussion part, uh, the species uh, belonging to the genus Corydeus, which can be found in India, can be grouped in two different uh, 
can be grouped into two different groups based on antennal morphology or coloration. Group one contains which has black antenna, it has uh, Cordis Ianus, Asamensis, Fuscus, Laosanus, and Sanguinolentus. Whereas group two contains uh, antennae with orange or yellowish apical segment, and all three new species belong to the group two with Prunius, Single Anus, Chinensis, and Nepalensis. So in our Cordia species, no one, we found that it resembles to the Cordia single anus and also recovered as sister taxon to it. Therefore, we did compare our Corridius uh, species no one with the lectotype of uh, Corridius single anus, and we did not find any similar character in both the species. Whereas our anatomical uh, results does show that, that these species are distinct. The shape of paramias in both species are distinct as uh, can be seen in these figures. Then Corridis species number two, which has four segmented antenna can be uh, distinguished uh, or can be distinguished from rest other species because this is the only species belonging to the genus Corridius which has four segmented antenna. Then Corridis species number three, it does look similar to the Corridis chinensis but lacks the black color in basal one fourth of the apical antennal segment. So the image here shows that the uh, antennal coloration in Corridius species no 3 and Corridius chinensis and also the shape of uh, paramires was completely different in both of these species. We did uh, compare our Corridius uh, species no 3 with the chinensis uh, lectotype of Corridius chinensis and again we did find the similar pattern of uh, antennal coloration where uh, Corridius chinensis has one fourth of basal uh, seg apical segment black. Then moving to phylogenetic consideration, uh, the family level relationship showed that Denitoridae is a sister taxon to Tessartomidae, and our species delimitation methods uh, resulted uh, thirteen uh, resulted dis uh, different putative species. And PPT and BPT analysis uh, resulted 13 and 14 PPT of species respectively, whereas ASAP1 and ASAP2 resulted 14 and 25 PPT of species respectively. And then we also found that species delimitation analysis supported uh, establishment of all three new species. And we also recovered or we also re establishing uh, Corridius necriventris as a separate species based on morphological and uh, phylogenetic or molecular analysis. Then we did find a uh, found uh, hidden diversity in Corridius chinensis. In case of Corridius chinensis, we found geographical variation in morphology and we also found out there are six independent lineages. So these individuals are from diverse geographic conditions and they may have different ecological niches or food preferences. So back in 2007, Dick Quirrell explained the gray area where daughter lineages become increasingly distinct from each other and they acquired uh, different properties. So given that uh, the Corridius chinensis is genetically diverse yet morphologically indistinguishable suggesting that this species may be in the gray area therefore like we were able to see, see uh, six uh, distinct lineages then in conclusion so presently there are 13 species uh, found found in uh, india including three new uh, new species described in this study and we can also uh, say that morphological and molecular data support the establishment of three new species. Uh, also, we re we rediscovered the Corridius asamensis as well as Corridius fuscus after 100 years. So we are first time uh, giving the photographs or uh, anatomical features for these two species. Our uh, findings suggest uh, using integrative taxonomic framework indicates the presence of species complexes within Corridius that needs 
extensive sampling and also especially for Cordillera chinensis we believe that population level studies can reveal more uh, interesting fact about this species and finally i would like to mention a large uh, scale global phylogenetic investigation of all known Corydia species might uncover the hidden diversity uh, hidden diversity so with that i would like to acknowledge uh, all museums who who provided the uh, uh, photographs of types and also the curators and with this i can take any questions Thank mm -hmm. you.